Greetings and welcome to another episode of these video blogs. Uh, my name is Kevin Matthews and I am the tax professor. And remember, class is still in session because learning never stops. So today we're going to talk about another topic. I mean, we've, we, we've already done a video where we talked about um, uh, simple IRAs. We're going to talk about a different type of program that's out there that, that's also very useful for small businesses. And this is called the Simplified Employee Pension Plan. Sometimes you'll hear it called SEP IRAs. A very mi big misconception about these SEP IRAs is that the SEP stands for self-employed, uh, which is obviously not the case. It's Simplified Employee Pension Plan. And so what it is is that, um, I, and I'll tell you, as a, um, as a CPA, oftentimes we're using these with um, businesses who have no employees, or businesses who have very, very few employees but are very, very loyal employees. And we'll talk about some of the reasons why, why that's the case later on when we when we look into the, um, the various um, aspects of this. But basically what happens is these are wonderful accounts because what it does is that it allows small business owners to really take good tax deductions based upon how much they made in their income. Uh, it can really severely lower um, tax liability for the, the current year. And so what we really like to do with these is um, offer these for our clients um, who, uh, who are going to be in a situation where you know this, this could offer significant tax savings for them. Generally speaking, you know, most people will have a traditional IRA, and we talked about that in another video too, so I won't dive too much into that. But one of the, the limitations of the, the traditional IRA is that you can only make a contribution of, you know, and it changes every year, but you know, we're talking like five, six thousand dollars depending on your age and depending on certain circumstances. And so, you know, if you're trying to save for retirement, and say you're a business owner, chances are that's probably not going to be enough money in order to be able to do that kind of savings. And so um, a SEP IRA, um, because it's got significantly higher limits, uh, tends to be a much better deal. And so a time that we're usually talking to clients about SEP IRAs is usually when they're talking about you know, trying to add a retirement aspect to their business planning, but they don't like the 401ks or the simple IRAs because of the administrative burdens that they have to deal with. Um, or uh, sometimes there's going to be several requirements that they have to put up with that's just not good enough for them. So sometimes what will happen is they'll take a look at this, the, the, the SEP IRA is, as, as a viable alternative to those other more um, expensive and and burden some plans. And so one of the things that we do is, you know, you, you have to first of all find out if you're going to be able to be qualified to use one. And the qualifications are pretty simple. Um, you just have to have a business. Uh, um, you know, there's there's a few other minor qualifications for this, but it's the, 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 the relatively few qualifications it takes in order to set one of these up is one of the reasons why these are extremely attractive. Um, I usually refer, I mean, I have to refer it out because I don't set up these actual plans. All I do is recommend them for clients and then they go to their financial planners to get them set up. But I have a few kind of financial planners that I actually recommend for people if they're going to be setting these kinds of plans up. And everyone that I've talked to says, if I have an IRA with them, 15 minutes max to set one of these things up. And... Um, Oftentimes, when we're dealing with this, uh, you know, we'll take a look at somebody's income tax return and we'll find out, oh, hey, you made a ton of money this year. You need to you need to put some money into a um, into a SEP IRA in order to be able to save some taxes this year. And sometimes then the 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 the, uh, the, the taxpayer will take a look at it and, and do that. So. Uh, you know, they said that you can actually, you know, set one up. They said, you know, using the IRS model set form, uh, 5305 you know, SEP, uh, by adopting and implementing this model SEP, which doesn't have to be filed with the IRS, you satisfy the SEP requirements. Like I said, uber easy, uh, not very difficult to deal with. And most of the time your financial plan is going to be setting you up on that anyways. Um, you will receive a tax deduction based on the contributions that you put into it. However, when you take it out, you will be taxed on all withdrawals, including earnings that have taken place since then. So this isn't like a Roth IRA, which we talked about in other videos too. Uh, this is just a, um, like I said, it's, it's basically, a, uh, I like to call it a traditional IRA on steroids, and, and it generally works that way. 
So when you set up a set for yourself or your employees, if you want to make this for your employees too, you can. Um, we tend not to, and, and usually if there's employees involved, we'll probably you know kind of suggest to the our clients that you know go ahead and do the simple IRA at least. But there's a couple clients that I have that this just isn't a viable option for them to do the simple IRA. So they want to go ahead and set up a SEP IRA, and it just makes it a lot easier for them. So it says that the maximum amount that you can make as so the maximum you can make to a SEP IRA is 25% of compensation or $55,000. <throat> and that is a 2018 number, by the way, because uh, it is indexed for inflation. And it does go up over time. Um, and it says the deduction for the contributions is not limited to the deduction ceiling applicable to an individual's own contribution to a regular IRA. So if your employees are contributing to an IRA on their own, that doesn't affect whether you can make one of these contributions on their behalf or not. I do remember that was actually raised up as a question one time about whether there could be some kind of double dipping and there actually it does permit it. So there are other requirements that you have to have, but they're pretty basic. All regular employees must elect to participate in the program. Contributions can't discriminate in favor of highly compensated employees. This is why we tend to stay away from this for employees, because if you have one employee that decides that they don't want to do this, you're done. And that's something that you don't want to, uh, you don't want to have. That's just, it's just, it's, it's, it's burdensome in that sense. So that's why uh, we tend to recommend this for, for, for companies that don't have employees. But these requirements are relatively minor compared to some of the other plans that there are, are out there. Uh, you know, the simple IRA, simple 401k, and then a full-blown 401k. They have a lot of administrative burden. Sometimes audits are required. Sometimes other things are required, and we just want to avoid those. Um, you know, and like I said, so usually when we're doing these types of IRAs for people, we're talking small business owners, who probably don't have any employees is probably where we tend to recommend the most. Now, there's one or two employees <clears throat> might still recommend this, particularly if the employees are of like mind with the with our with our client. But again, I just I, I'm just one of those kind of people that usually tries to avoid headaches wherever possible. Um, one thing I really do like about the SEP IRA, there's so many places that can set these up. I mean, I know credit unions that can set these up. I know that there's um, other banks that can set these up, which is actually much better than you would have for like a simple IRA or a traditional 401k or a simple 401k, which all have to be set up usually at uh, these big brokerage houses because the other guys won't touch these with a 10 foot pole. SEP IRAs, because they're relatively simple, like I said, most of them are set up within 15 minutes. Um, you know, that's one reason why they're very popular uh, and very useful. Now, again, getting back to these, um, who would we set these things up? Who would we set these kind of plans up for? People who are going to set these kind of plans up for generally are going to be, uh, you know, single member LLCs, uh, sole proprietorships, maybe partnerships where there's no employees. Um, but generally speaking, we're, we're, we're going to tend to, t we're going to try to recommend these kinds of plans for, uh, companies that actually have no employees, because like I said, just the, the, the requirement that everybody has to like to participate into it, which is something that we don't like to do. Um, and like I said, you can do it the simple IRA. There's so many different options that you can do with that, that it, that kind of alleviates that. So if you have employees that that's usually how that works out. Um, so one of the coolest things that I really like about these plans is the contribution uh, timing. So what ends up happening is, say for example, as a, as a, if you're not a business owner and you have your own traditional IRA, and you're doing your tax returns, say it's about March, and you realize you have, a, you have more taxable income than you would have otherwise, you have until April 15th to make a contribution to that traditional IRA. If you make the contribution by April 15th, it can count towards last year. Okay. SEP IRAs have a really juicy benefit to them is that I don't have to wait. I don't have to make it by April 15th. I can actually wait until the extended due date, which means I could go as far as October 15th for a calendar tax period uh, for, for a calendar taxpayer that goes all the way to the previous year. So say for example, I got a guy who comes in, doesn't give me his books until March. And I'm sitting there and I'm working on his tax returns and I'm kind of like, eh, you don't really look like you're going to have too much income this year. Go ahead and make a payment of blah and, and we'll, you know, we'll go ahead and extend your tax return for you. Come June or July, and believe me, this does happen a lot. 
they realize I made an accounting error. And instead of you know having only you know ten thousand dollars of income, they found out that they have one hundred fifty thousand dollars of income. Uh, as I did have one client that figured that one out. So what ended up happening is we were you know one of the, we were kind of making a big scramble for it. First of all, we made a payment as soon as we could, but we also took into consideration doing a SEP IRA contribution. So it ended up saving them thousands of dollars on taxes and penalties and interest on that because we were we already had the tax return extended, so it's not like we had to justify that anymore. It was just him by himself, so it, you know it wasn't that bad. So it's it's just something that we're able to do and also take care of um, the the taxpayers. And, I, and so sometimes I call these whoops a daisy uh, IRAs, and that's just because sometimes when you realize, oh my gosh, I have so much income, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. You can go to the client and say, hey, can you make a cut IRA contribution of this amount of money? And if you do, I can save you this much on taxes. They're usually pretty happy for that. Um, and, and so it's actually very good. So that's all I have for you today. Uh, simplified employee pension plan. It's also a simplified video. There's not really much to talk about with them, but they are a very useful tool uh, in planning. Um, again, my name is Kevin Matthews. I am the tax professor. Class never ends because the learning never stops. If you want to get in touch with me, you can go ahead and leave a comment in the comment box below. Or if you want to, you can reach out to me at www.betasolutioncpa.com. That's www.betasolutioncpa.com. I'd be happy to hear from you, uh, and I'd love to hear some comments back as to uh, what you guys would like to hear about. Again, thank you very much for watching the video.